You are now rocking with the best Illmatic podcast with your host, Louis L. Reed. Surviving beats, overcoming breaks, we got motion. Your go to podcast unpacking hip hop, trauma, and transformation. What's up? This is your man, Louis L. Reed, back for another dynamic episode of Illmatic Surviving Beats, Overcoming Breaks. I'm here with special co host, PC, aka. Man, Pastor Carl, Pastor the Hood, PC. Pastor the Hood. I, I, <laughs> you ain't never heard no Pastor they call Pastor the Hood. And uh, we're here by a special, special guest who I'm considering a budding friend who actually left Philly. Uh, on fire last night. Uh, 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 we were, yeah. I, I think I think that the uh, Philadelphia's bravest is still putting out that fire after he tore it down with mm-hmm. uh, Trey Songs last night. Someone who's needing no introduction. Philadelphia Freeway. Peace, peace. What's up, everybody? What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. You love. It's good. Good to see you, man. And thanks for coming. Thanks for coming through. I know it's Ramadan. Yeah. Um, I know that you you really um you know focused on 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 grounding yourself and and making sure that you get through. Uh, Ramana, so I really do appreciate you, man. Thanks so much. Love, bro. Yeah, yeah. So look, we just want to jump right into it. You have, from what I understand and know about you and the brief conversation that we've had, um, you are a very, very interesting person. Not from in terms of your artistry. I'm talking about from your humanity. Um, I think that when people look at you, when they look at how you have matriculated, in the in the in the genre of hip hop, there's a certain stereotype, and I love when I first met you because I heard you talk about being a father. Mm-hmm. I heard you talk about being a son, and I also heard you talk about being a black man with health challenges, by which we don't necessarily talk about um, amongst amongst the culture and in the community. Talk to a little talk to us a little bit about that. I mean, you know, that's life. You know, I deal with reality, you know, um, father, son, you know, uh, it all comes out of my music. You know, I'm a reality rapper, I rap about things that I see, things that I go through. And, you know, I I had some challenges in the past year. Mm-hmm. I was uh, September 2000, September 15, 2015, I was diagnosed with end-stage renal failure. Mm-hmm. I was on dialysis from September 15, 2015 to February 5th, 2019, when I received my gift of life, my new kidney. What, what is it like when someone like you, who mm. grows up in Philadelphia, you probably experienced more trauma than a little bit. You survived that trauma. And then the thing about it, you, 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 you escape probably being shot and everything that you can imagine that comes with the street. And then Definitely. you get a diagnosis that you your health is is scarce what, what what was that moment like for you oh man it was like the reality check you know uh more than more than with this, anything that you've ever experienced in the street yeah you know because it was just like what happened to me is is something that they call crashing on a dialysis mm-hmm. like you know i had three risk factors for for kidney failure one being hypertension, another one being diabetes, and surprisingly, just being African American is a risk factor. Mm-hmm. So I had those risk factors. I had examples in my family. My uncle Chucky had a uh, kidney failure. He got uh, put on dialysis, got a transplant, then he went back on dialysis, and he passed away in um, 2022. Mm-hmm. I had a cousin Shandia that had kidney issues back when we were younger, and she passed away, left two kids. Did you know that she had kidney issues when you were younger? Yeah, but I didn't know how serious it was. Got you know, I, did, I didn't know, you know, anything about it. Mm-hmm. I just knew they were saying that she wasn't taking care of her kidneys. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I remember hearing that, and then I remember her passing away from not taking her medicine and stuff. So, yeah, you know, Pastor, uh, Pastor Carl, that's crazy. Like, we don't have discussions. You think about it. There's two people significant in his family. And when you think about <clears throat> genome markers, when you think about, like, those genetic markers— we don't have conversations in our family that's talking about like, yo, trauma, that's talking about the things that we need to be screaming for that yes. potentially could put put us at risk for 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 health issues. You know, typically in our families, our households, we talk about survival mechanisms, you know what I mean? Like how do we make our money? How do we try to get ahead? How do we stay afloat? How do we try to survive or make sure we're not getting shot or killed out here? 
and not talking about those hidden killers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And not to mention from a survival perspective, you know, um, and free, I'm sure you can relate to this for sure, for sure. But like, we would have to eat what's in front of us. We have to eat what we can afford. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? And you know, I know I'm a Christian, he Muslim, and you know what I mean? So pork may not have been on the menu in their crib, but it's like, man, sugar killers, carbs, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Not eating wheat Definitely. bread. You, you heard of Murray's? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Murray steaks? What's Murray's? Murray? Oh, Murray's like a, is like a market. Cheap market. Everything in there is Murray's. Yep. Like, you know, you know, the market, you yeah. might have like Kellogg's. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> everything Murray's. So they got like Murray's steaks, Murray's mm -hmm. hash browns. So, the they fish sticks. Had, they said these hash brown boxes of hash browns, and I used to eat. I can see. It. I can see his eyes. I can see his eyes light up. <laughs> he took more hash browns. Gonna put like some syrup on them, Jones. Yeah. Lunch, dinner, ketchup. Like yeah. to dress it up, however. But yeah, that was the meal. Like, you know, right. my grandma. My grandma. And Murray's is in our. Is it? Is in the neighborhood. Yeah. Is in the hood. I'm not sure about now. Yeah. It used to be. Yeah. In the neighborhood, so. Yeah. My grandma from 25th of Lehigh. I'm from 24th of Somerset. When Murray's was on 22nd Street. Yeah, they had to walk right to right to Murray's. <laughs> she had, she had loaded shopping cart up. You know what I'm saying? So and everything. when you could get some Murray steaks, she was winning. Oh, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Chicken patty, <laughs> chicken patty, yeah. Man, them French toast sticks. Yeah, what? <laughs> so yeah, we need to bring Murray's back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll make it healthy for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, make it healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Murray, Murray's two point oh. Yeah. Uh, but but when when we're thinking about when I'm thinking about all oh, the flurries, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that reverse shit. All the flurry. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> trademark that before before, yeah, yeah. <laughs> before somebody runs with it. But when when I think about even like in our previous conversations, we were talking about how people in our family, our family members, go to prison, they get shot. Mm -hmm. Those are conversations that we don't even have after it happens. Exactly. What contributed to you going to prison? What contributed to being shot? Mm -hmm. What contributed to you, to you hustling? What contributed to your health condition? We don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. And so freeway, going back to you talking about your cousin, you talking about your uncle, um, and you know, continue on, please. Yeah, you know, I had those examples in my family. Yeah, and I had risk factors, and I still was unaware that it happened to me. So when it happened to me, I was floored, like you know. But uh, I remember when I got the call from the doctor, told me to get to the emergency room. Where were you? I was in the house. Mm -hmm. First thing I did was go to the masjid. Me being Muslim, I went to the masjid. I prayed. I asked Allah to help me deal with whatever the situation is. Because mm -hmm. at the time, I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. I just knew something wasn't right. That's why I went and got blood work done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I got diagnosed with uh, end-stage renal failure. Mm -hmm. They cut my chest open, put a permacath in my chest, mm -hmm. started doing dialysis. Two hours of dialysis for the first time. Then it was uh, four hours a day, three times a week. From there, all the way until I got the transplant. Yeah. So a black man getting a transplant. This is the first time I've ever heard of it. Mm -hmm. I, I've never heard of a black person mm -hmm. being a recipient of a, of a transplant. I've heard of, of us like getting blood transfusions, mm -hmm. but not a transplant. Mm -hmm. How long did you have to, like, what's that process like? Man, I could probably still be on the list. It's like, it's a process. Mm -hmm. First of all, you got to be healthy enough to get put on a transplant list. So you got to get, when you work up, they touch you for everything. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're healthy enough to receive the transplant. Then it's the waiting game. Mm -hmm. You got to wait for years. And, you know, um, I opted to do a special procedure. You know, they got a lot of clinical trials. And a lot of people be scared of clinical trials, but I suggest you look into it and see something might be something out there that might work for you. So shout out to the good people at John Hopkins. Um, I received a kidney with hepatitis C, and they cured the hepatitis C. Wow. Praise God. So wow. before, I, before I went under to uh, get this actual sh transplant, they gave me a dose of a medicine called Maverick. You had to take one pill for eight weeks, uh, one pill a day. Mm -hmm. So a person with hepatitis C has thousands of millions of units of hepatitis C in their system. Mm -hmm. When I came up from the transplant, I had hepatitis C, but I only had 16 units of hepatitis C in my system. Mm -hmm. By the third time he tested me, it was undetectable. Mm -hmm. It's gone still to this day. I, didn't have, I don't know if hepatitis C. Well, I mean, no. well, I mean, and the procedure was so new, insurance didn't even cover it at the time. Wow. You know, but if it wasn't for that procedure, I might still possibly be on the way. Unless, wow. And not even having the strength to sit here and have a conversation like this. Yeah, I mean, some, it depends on the day. Sometimes I'm cool and have dialysis. Sometimes I'm cool. Sometimes I'm very drained and I don't feel like doing anything. Yeah. The yeah. process of dialysis, uh, it does what your kidneys do. It cleans the toxins mm -hmm. and the fluid out of your uh, out of your blood, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they hook you to the, the type of dialysis I did was hemodialysis, where I actually went into the dialysis center, 
They stuck me with two needles. One is called the venous, one is called the arterial. Mm -hmm. One sucks the blood out, put it in the dialyzer. The dialyzer cleans the toxins and the fluids out of your blood. Mm -hmm. And then the other needle pumps the blood back into your body. Mm -hmm. Process takes four hours. Mm -hmm. Man, shout out to you, man, because you, you know, you, you extremely informed. Yeah, I was I was just thinking that I'm, I'm sitting like, here. I'm like this. He breaking this cat is sitting here yeah. like a a walking brand ambassador yeah, for her. Yeah. And we and we need that. But yeah. I also wanted to commend you because you said something to me, and I was like, you know, as a pastor, I'm probably a little biased when it comes to this. But you said something to me that was extremely key that many of our black brothers, you know, what I'm saying, fail to uh, carry on and carry out with now. But you got a call from your doctor. First thing you did was lean on your faith. Mm, you went to your household of faith, mm, you know, definitely. and prayed. And I believe that, you know, the same way we don't have a lot of these conversations from a, you know, a wellness perspective in the physical, mm -hmm. in our health condition. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're primarily now beginning to keep out of our own lives is the spiritual wellness. Mm, and, and you, which I believe, you know, just by hearing you say this, I think that's that would. I could be wrong. You could correct me, but I feel like that's also what compelled you to be bold enough and take that and make that choice to say, I'm going to go through this clinical trial because I prayed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're absolutely right. Then you asked him. Okay. You know? <laughs> like God is the main reason that got me through all these trials and tribulations that I've been to. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, uh, and before I was diagnosed with kidney failure, I had a relationship with God. I had a connection with God. That's why I knew what to do. Mm -hmm. Immediately go mm -hmm. to turn to God, mm -hmm. put it in God's hands. And then go stand in front of it, and that's what we do. You know, I'm the, uh, I work with celebrity ambassador for the National Kitty Foundation. I work with Gift of Life. Mm -hmm. I work with Donate Life. Mm -hmm. I have my I have a foundation, Freedom Thinkers Inc. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, we spread awareness about kidney health. You know, what's interesting. I'm thinking about how when you were talking about the, the spiritual perspective, talking about artistry, we talk with. Diamond Street King, mm -hmm. and he was talking about drill music. He said, drill music is done. It's over. And when you translate that, in my mind, what I hear is that there's no soul, there's no spirit in music anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you, 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 just follow my thread for a mm -hmm. second. When you think about, like, the music from, like, the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, even the, the 2000s, people came out of houses of worship, even in rap even in R and B, et cetera, right? Like we came out of, and there was a, there was there was there was soul there. Mm -hmm. And with the generation of music now, you don't necessarily have that soul because people this 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 generation is not tapped into that higher power, that spirituality. What what do you think about that, Freak? I think it's a wicked going on. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, from the music to the clothing, like, you know, even like what everybody's wearing, Hell Star and like, you know, mm -hmm. People's praising all this negativity and everybody demons and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like if you really knew the science behind what a demon is, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be calling yourself a demon. Mm -hmm. you know, it was mm -hmm. very serious. Yeah, you know, right. yeah, but, um, yeah. It's a lot going on. I feel mm -hmm. like spiritual warfare going on. I feel Maybe. like warfare period is going on. Mm -hmm. Like you know, uh, we just lost an artist from the city last night. Got Talk killed. about that. Yeah, killed right in front of his mom's house. Doran Ramadan, he was Muslim, but I killed Doran Ramadan right in front of his mom's so, mm. with him. That's trauma. Yeah. Not only for his family, but for the people that know him, for the people that seen him get shot out there. Yeah. And, and nowadays, they post it right on social media. How many times you've seen somebody laid out flat, artists that you love? Look at Dolph. Mm -hmm. People love Dolph, but a lot of people, last memory of him being shot up in the uh, in the, in the, uh, mm -hmm. cookie store. Mm -hmm. P&B. You know yeah, P&B. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know? yeah. And you know, some piece of PNB, I was, I got praise Janaz. I pray that Allah, you know, gives him and strengthens his family and, and gives him gives him the highest level of paradise. You know, and and and, and I'm going to talk to you about the, um, the brother who lost his life, um, Pastor Carl. Because when you and I we met today, you had like you woke up to like seven seven missed calls. Yeah, uh, from that in our generation, that was a once in a generation occurrence. We we had big and pop move. And that shook everything, and everybody was like, "All right, we gotta act like, we gotta act like we got some sense." Yeah. Now it's so common, you don't even have time to to, to grieve. Yeah. You don't. You, it's like, oh yeah, actually he got killed, and he got killed, and he got killed. It's like, what do you mean? People it just didn't happen. They desensitized to it. And desensitized. Yeah. That's it. It's yeah. happened so often. It's like it's nothing now. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. And with the rise of social media, you see it everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole rise. Yeah, I remember when I was young. I probably I probably was like thirteen. 
and I seen a dead body in the street. And like, I couldn't forget it. Like, yeah. I remember that for years. Yeah. But now I ask somebody that's 13, I mean, dead bodies they seen or how normal is it? It's how normal it is, man. It's normal. And, again, and that's the part where, man, we had multiple people on and everybody was sharing those same age brackets, man. Some of us was nine seeing our first few shootings at 13, seeing them bodies. And free notice being in Philly, like he said, you know, it's, it's, it's spiritual, man. It's wicked out here because it was certain places that was off limits for us to even think about engaging in violence at. <laughs> on an L, on a subway. You'd have saw somebody had a problem with L. L is like the elevator okay. train. Okay. You saw, you saw yeah. the train when we were sitting together earlier in Kizita. Okay. Like that train that rides above. Yeah. But you would have saw people somewhere and it would have just been like, you would have been mad. Dang, I can't even do nothing. I seen him. Kids, and I'm going to have catch mom, with the like kids, they mom, mm-hmm. downtown center city. Mm-hmm. It was just like outside of a party, whatever. It was just, dang, yo, I... So what's the name? And and you was yeah, Yeah. and you go. You was talking to your homies the next day, and it was just like yeah. But you know, man, we was on the train. We was going to jail, like you know. It's it's that reckless, and it just a lot of it is nothingness. Mm -hmm. So he absolutely right when he's talking about that spiritual warfare, and when we start talking mental health, that spiritual health is important. And we live in a post religious society where people don't don't want to care for religion at all. Mm -hmm. They gonna push this line, Mm -hmm. push Christianity away. Mm Talking about religions trying to control us, but one of the biggest things that we see amongst our people is the lack of what control. Yeah, we yeah. lack self control. I, I got a great friend, my brother Seth Free. He's a Christian. Oh yeah, yeah. you know we we got a great relationship. We talk about God a lot. You know we we up in the morning on the phone. You know sharing ideas and everything, and like you know we talk about this type of stuff all the time, man. Like this, this stuff is really really affecting the community at a high level. A high level. You know, it's it's you said religion and free set relationship. Mm-hmm. And where I think about is religion is the discipline that keeps the relationship in line. Oh, God, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Religion, re- religion is the vehicle yeah. that keeps the, the relationship in line. Absolutely. And, and so I'm going to I'm going to free. I, I, I watched something and I, I keep going back to yesterday. The reason why I keep going back to yesterday is because free. Like he he when I say he burned down that set with Trey Songs, he 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 really he really did his thing. Um, the city love free. I'm gonna be before I, before I cut you off here though. Yeah, what city? New York? No, I'm saying I'm Jersey. Saying, yeah, Philly. I'm saying oh, a lot Philly. Of places. All right, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say this this the one thing yeah, though, right? Uh, you know, in comparison to anybody else from this city, and this ain't a stab at nobody. Free is one of the few artists. That you could probably count on your hands with that, like you never heard the city feel away against free. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, and I mean that, yeah. like from from your highest levels of certain yeah. rappers yeah. to the, the the smaller level people. Yeah. Like free get love everywhere. Yeah. And his energy will always be that way. So it don't matter if it's made in America. If yeah. It's a a small venue. Yeah. If it's whatever. You know. You know what I mean? You hear every, even though what we do is wrong. Like, yeah, people go crazy to it. Yeah, when they when he when he came out last Listen. night. Yeah, Listen. yeah, that that's that that's something. Uh, after, a lot of years later, like you know, a lot of years. Yeah, later. a lot of years. Later. Last night I went back and I was in I was in my hotel and I was on your page and I saw your daughter and I saw her. I think she was she was dancing to uh, MJ song, Michael Jackson song, mm-hmm. um, in a video that you had posted. And when I first met you, you were talking about lost, losing your son and your daughter. What is that like for you to not only carry the grief of that loss, but also, you know, to be working through your own health issues? Man. Sometimes it's unbearable. Mm. Like, you know, sometimes they hit me out of nowhere. It could be anything, a song, a smell, or like anything. Mm-hmm. Like my daughter, like I would, my daughter, we used to go to the produce market, and she was like the watermelon whisperers. <laughs> Always picked like the best watermelon. I remember one day I walked in a in a, a produce market and I seen the watermelons and just broke down. I don't know. It's like anything could trigger it, anything could set it off. Yeah. But the the beautiful thing about having this relationship with God and this land, our prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he lost six of his children. Oh, wow. You know, so when I when I get in those faults and I get into those moves, I think of him. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think about how he carried it, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the example that was set forth before me, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah. I lean on that. Yeah. Yeah. And she was 21. 
Yeah, yeah. Girl dad. You don't you don't think about you don't think about freeway being a girl dad. You don't think about rappers being girl dad. Yeah, my best friend. Man. Oh, yeah. When my son passed away, she was my support system. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like in the studio somewhere or something, and she'd text me like, "Dad, you're such an amazing dad." Me and Jai was blessed to have you. Like, you know, just being there for me. Mm-hmm. That unconditional love that I got from her, from my son, and from my dad. We all lived together. Now it's just me. Like, you know, I see mm-hmm. that's constant love that I was getting is just not there no more. Mm-hmm. And also, that in general, mm-hmm. you know, and no father ever thinks that he's going to lose his children. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's, it's something that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Yeah. You know, but I got to deal with it and I got to keep moving forward. Yeah. You know, and I'm trying my best to, you know, pray for them, do things for them. And it's how we believe it's things that we can do for our people that passed on. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. All we can make do out for them. We could donate things in their name, mm-hmm. like charity. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I got a well in Yemen that's dedicated to my son and my daughter. Mm-hmm. And inshallah, every time somebody drink from my well, my children get blessings from God. It's like you could build a library, like yeah. anything, mm-hmm. whatever you do that's going to benefit someone, and you dedicate it to your loved ones that pass away, they will get a benefit from it. Mm-hmm. That's what's up, man. I mean, my hope, my hope is, man, you know, especially during the, the climate that we in, free, that brothers would, that you would be come, you know what I'm saying, and whatever I got to do, I don't care what I got to do, the city level, state level, whatever, a lot of relationships I have. To even help have you to some of being an ambassador for your own faith, because I feel like there's a lot of brothers who feel like they are they may be living through hell or going through hopeless scenarios. Mm-hmm. You talking about losing a son, losing your daughter, while at the same time battling you know a condition that you can't even control yourself. You follow what I'm saying? All those things hitting you at one time, while yet you still grace uh, to have the ability to perform. You know what I'm saying? To still be here mm-hmm. and to still you know strive. Um, in spite of everything, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like so many people should be able to reconnect or tap in or be, even not even reconnect, but to tap in and take their faith serious because of your example, man. That's true. Um, and I think that, you know, that's, that's powerful. And I mm-hmm. think that, man, we got to be able to uplift that more than anything, because it's amazing to hear you hear what you're saying. Yeah. And for people to think about freeway to rapper, yeah. And think about the hits, mm-hmm. but not even realize your most meaningful, impactful work is you working with the hugest kidney foundations. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sharing your faith across various platforms. Yeah. And and it's more honor in that than being able to say, I killed it at a concert. Yeah. And, and it's, there's also, I think that even a larger honor than what it is that you talked about is being able to say, I had a beautiful relationship with my daughter. Yeah. Yep. Right. right. Like I, I was, I was someone that my daughter would have probably strove to marry. Yeah. Right. Like that, that to me, absolutely. It's that's, that's the two X. She had me on her phone as a best friend. Mm. Oh, the mark used to get jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's a, um, it's a promise that Allah made to us in Islam with every difficulty comes ease, mm-hmm. you know? So you got to look for the lesson in everything you go through. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like when my daughter was fighting cancer, I was on dialysis. I got a transplant before I had a major surgery. She had to get a surgery on her back after she came out the surgery. She had the drains and you know everything that people go through after the surgery. So I was able to go on my phone and show her, look, baby, I've been through this before. And like, you know, I've been through the same thing you're going through. Just stay strong. Yeah. And then, you know, the knowledge that I gained from dealing with health conditions mm-hmm. gave me more compassion when I had to take care of my dad when he was battling dementia. Mm-hmm. You know, being there for my daughter is times when the people... Like the people, the uh, the home health aides that came to help, like I would have it done probably before they got there half the time, you know, because mm-hmm. I knew what to do because I've been through it before, mm-hmm. you know, and, and yeah. that's the blessing in it, you know. Yeah. I feel like Allah put me through some of the things that I went through so I could be prepared for mm-hmm. other situations that came about. Absolutely. You you talked about being in the house with your daughter and your dad, and obviously, and my son. Oh, and your son, and your son. With, with your your children and your father, what was your relationship like with your dad? You don't you don't hear too many like black men. I'm um, talking about their you know like being in home with their dad and taking care of their dad. Yeah, my and, dad, my dad was my hero. Like you know, um, say that one more time for the people in the back. My dad was my hero. Like yeah. at one point, I felt like he was the strongest person in the world. Like mm. that, I looked up to him. Like you know, uh, 
and it was an honor and a blessing to be able to be there for him when he needed me to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, once his dementia started getting worse, I moved him in with me. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want him in no home or around people that he didn't know. And, you know, him and my mom broke up, and one thing that he wanted was to have his family back. Mm -hmm. And at the end, he had that because my mom was there with me, helping me take care of him. Uh -huh. And he would just be happy. He would just be like looking yeah, around. Yeah, he, he, he had to mention he 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 didn't forget his boo though. Yeah, I ain't not forget her. <laughs> he was always on my mom's side when he. <laughs> my mom named Barbara Ann. He was like Barbara Ann. I'm still your man. <laughs> hey Freeman, he had all the he had the, the poems and all the raps I got it from him. <laughs> then I told him, I told my mom I got it from him. And she like, no, nah, you got it from me. She said she used to write poetry back in the day. Too. Really? Mm. Wow, man, it's crazy you say that, man. I lost my grandmother uh to alzheimer's and she had to sorry for your loss yeah man and um you know that's one of my biggest regrets man when i got locked up this 2009 or something like you know what i mean um my grandma still knew who i was but mm -hmm. i did the same thing except in reverse when my grandma started having that dementia and stuff uh she started kept the same routines you know but she started going to the market and she would take the same food she would buy mm -hmm. and typically eat she was taking it and trying to walk out the market with it. Forget she had to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we started getting those kind of reports. So then I was like, I left my own crib. It was like, I'm going to move in with my grandma because I was in yeah, the same yeah. mindset. Yeah. Oh, we ain't put in no home and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then the problem was we had to lock the doors because it was like, no, you know, if I leave, you got to lock the door. Yeah. But then she leave a stove on and stuff and forget. And it's like, all right, yo, I can't be here 24-7. Yeah, yeah. I had, to was, get, I had to bring family in besides the um the workers mm -hmm. that came. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout yeah. out to my Uncle O's and my little cousin Ricky. They really helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's times my dad left out the house mm -hmm. and yep. he'll be wandering. Like, mm -hmm. you know, one time the cops brought him. I was, just got off the road. I was asleep. My little cousin's supposed to be watching him. I wake up. The cops at the door. I'm like, what's going on? Like, you know, yeah. like, I'm having yeah. flashbacks in my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you ain't doing nothing wrong. Wait, you come over here. What cool up to you? Y'all got a war? Yeah, but, you know, um, it That's definitely cool. was difficult. Yeah. You know, um. It was times where he would ask me for me. Mm. Like, you know, what does that mean? I'd be like, Dad, I'm right here. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I would just like, you know, then it's times he'd be like, man, I'm all fucked up. And like, you know, he didn't, he hated being like that, but it was nothing he could do about it. So mm -hmm. I would just let him know, like, Dad, you did a great job. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, I love you. We here for you, you mm -hmm. know, and just would try my best to encourage him and keep him happy. Yeah. You know? He was happy for the most part. Yeah. You know? What was his proudest moment of here? I mean, I don't know. I know he was extremely proud, though. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. uh, I can't say a moment mm -hmm. per se. Mm -hmm. I know my proudest moment was him. So when I was young, my mom was Christian, and my dad was a part of this thing called the Nation of Akibalon. I never so, heard of that. Uh, it was like it's, a, a, it's like it's, it's, the, it's the nation of Islam's first cousin. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it was shot. Like, they uh -huh. had, it was a... Uh, Brother in there that they said was the prophet. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it was uh, a guy named Baba that ran it. It was like vegetarians. Baba probably had a bunch of wives. You know, it was <laughs> yeah. it was yeah. crazy. Like, now that I understand religion, they was really shot out. Okay. You know, and my dad was on that. Mm -hmm. So he had us on that. You know, young. I remember one day, my dad came in the house and cut all the cords all the TVs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Talking about the TV sending subliminal messages. <laughs> So like six, seven months where he had no TV. <laughs> he might he might have been older son with the TV <laughs> some of the messages. Yeah. And one day he came back and like fixed all the cords and that. <laughs> no cartoons that you gotta go to your friend's house and watch TV. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he he finally let us watch TV again. But you know, um it was you know, you try to look for the good in everything. It was mm -hmm. some good like discipline and stuff, but as far as religion they were shut out. Like mm -hmm. they they, they were saying things that was yeah, it's now we believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last prophet. Mm -hmm. Still on the prophets, it's not going to be any more prophets. Jesus, peace be upon him, is going to come back again, but it's not going to be any more prophets. So, mm -hmm. for me to have somebody sitting next to me talking about he a prophet, he's a living prophet, he's yeah, a prophet, it's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, you know what I mean? But uh, my proudest moment is when I took my dad to take Shahada. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, he's a Muslim man. Uh, being able to wash him, wrap him, and bury him, mm -hmm. you know, I felt like I did my job mm -hmm. as a son and as a Muslim and being able to take care of him when he needed me, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, that was another real moment for me because mm -hmm. we got the same name. So when I'm walking away from the grave, mm -hmm. I see my name. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so that's a reminder. Yeah, yeah. Eventually that's going to yeah. be me, you know. 
you I know, don't think that your dad, uh-huh. man, to be honest with you, I think just by hearing you, man, I think your dad would be just as proud and believe the same about you that you believed about him. You believe that he was the strongest person ever. Mm-hmm. And anybody that's watching this or listening to this is probably thinking the same about you. Yeah, no, that's my real dad, rap. Like yo, you, yeah. they they listening, man. My man battling his health ailments, losing his children. He got to be the strongest person because yeah. majority, majority of Americans would probably already cancel they self yeah. over yeah. just one of the things yeah. that you name. Yeah. When they in that stage, they start reverting back to a child. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like he would tell me stories about when he was little and things that he had to battle with his like his mom and stuff like you know and uh. Like, you know, I got, like, in the crib, I got, like, Google throughout so I could just talk to the house and everything. <laughs> so we'd be in the room. I'd be like, hey, Google, turn the lights off. He'd be like, you a bad man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. He was a true star. He was like, stuff like yeah, that. Like, yeah. yeah, he thought you was Captain Kirk. Yeah. <laughs> my, my son went from platinum to Star Trek. <laughs> Jay Z ain't got nothing on him. Oh, man. So yeah, uh, he had a lot of good moments. Yeah, because he awesome. had moments like you know when he like we're free at like you know and I'm right here like mm-hmm. you know and uh it's rough it was rough for me but more than anything me feeling how he felt because that got to be lonely like if you don't you know the the people that love you is right here and you don't even know yeah. I can imagine like the lonely space that he was at mm-hmm. at that time. Yeah, you know, and that yeah. really hurts. You know? Yeah, but, mm-hmm. and Allah, I'm blessed to be able to be there for him. I'm glad that you were there for him. You know, my dad, my dad was Muslim, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I still got some unresolved, like you know, just hurt um, behind it. But uh, Dar Ramadan for um, in 2021, my dad um, was at a ATM. And he was in Buffalo, New York. My dad was 81 years old. And my dad was withdrawing some money. And he goes to leave the ATM. This guy in the neighborhood, my father used to give money to. Mm. It's on Juma, actually. He was going to Juma. Um, Dad used to give money to ask my dad for some money. Dad was like, I don't have it. Dudes hit my dad in the back of the head with a brick. And for two weeks, my father fought for his life. And... Free, I can tell you that <clears throat> I remember talking about the father's name and the stuff, right? I'm named after my father, but my father's name was Yusuf. He changed his name. And I remember being my dad's uh, health proxy. I got older sisters and siblings and stuff, mm-hmm. but I had to sign the paperwork, mm-hmm. you know, for his DNR and, you know, for them to go into palliative care, et cetera. Yeah. And I remember saying to myself, my father signed my birth certificate and I am signing his, in effect, his death That's certificate. Man, you know, the pull it. Right? And like, that was a moment for me, man. Mm-hmm. I was, and that those two weeks, though, I'm glad that I was there with him. I ain't leave his side. Yeah, I'm doing really that. I ain't great. I ain't great. I ain't great. great. I ain't 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 great. And I, I can tell you, I'm, 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 I'm a Christian, but my, interestingly enough, talking about my mom, my mom and my dad have been separated <laughs> since they did fed time together, you know, et cetera, right? Thanks. But my mom was there. They always had a love for each other. My mother was with my father when he passed away. This is what happened. Tell you a very quick story. My uncle was in the room, his brother, my dad's brother, and I guess it's the 10 o'clock prayer, whatever prayer that is in Islam. 10 in the morning or 10 p.m. Uh, it's probably each year. Okay. But the time varies. All right. Depending on. We never left my father alone. Ever. Me and my siblings. My sister walks out of the room. I'm at the hotel. My brothers, et cetera, they walk out of the room. The moment, and the moment that my sister walked out of the room, the alarm went off for that 10 o'clock prayer. And my father breathed his last breath. Mm. And my, my uncle who is Muslim said, your father told the deaf angels, you're not going to take probably, he probably told the deaf angel, you're not going to take me in front of my kids. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when I just think about like how I've been able to be there for my dad during the last two weeks of his life, 
you know, that gives me meaning. It gives me hope. Mm-hmm. Even during the times where I'm like, I smell a cigar. My dad used to smoke cigars. Mm-hmm. He's like, I don't care how Muslim I am. I'm smoking me a cigar. <laughs> yeah, my dad used to smoke cigars. And sometimes, like how you talking about with your daughter, I smell a cigar and it it paralyzed me. Mm-hmm. I'll hear a song. We drove to Virginia one day uh, free and my dad was playing a song by Gerald Levert, uh, answering service. He played it. Like 17 times, I'm like, yo, dad, driving this joint, uh, man. That's another thing about my dad. He's <laughs> listening to music all the time. Yeah. Like, songs. Yeah. It just, I was somewhere, I think I was like in a club out of town somewhere not too long ago. And one of them songs that my dad used to listen to all the time came on. That joint brought tears to my eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's in those moments, right? Yeah. It's in those, those, those unscheduled moments where you like, all right, I'm on my way from here to here and I'm looking fly. And then you hear something in the car and you like, Oh man, man. Yeah. yeah, you know. So, yeah, man. Sometimes the pain is unbearable. Mm-hmm. Like, be like, you know, it hits you from nowhere. You know, the one thing that I realized in everything that I went through, both my parents being incarcerated when I'm five, my sister being shot in her face when I'm 13, me being shot in my chest, having to relearn how to walk when I'm 14, my cousin being murdered, me having been involved with stuff, my dad being murdered, etc. The one thing that has been pronounced in my life is a scripture from the Apostle Paul where he said, God tells him, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And it's not until I've been the lowest in my life that God's strength, his love, his grace has been the most pronounced, that I felt it Mm -hmm. the most pronounced. And so, yeah, so um, as we pivot, before you finish, yeah. though, it's not it's like, you know, basically the same thing. These things that we go through are designed to bring us closer to God. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like these trials and tribulations are designed to bring you closer to God, and you got to take full advantage of them, you know, and lean on God when you put in these positions. Yeah. And that's, There's that's a lot of people that curse, credit. like, curse God. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, like Job's wife. To me and this yeah. and that. Like, you know, right. like, you know yeah. we go through trials. Like, you think you're not going to be tested like the people that was tested before you. And nobody guaranteed us. Yeah. Nobody guaranteed us an easy path in life. life. No, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't come out of the womb with a contract to say, you're going to have an easy path. You're going to be able to blow through everything. Nobody guaranteed us that. I, I told you, our prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he lost six children. Mm-hmm. And we consider him the best of mankind. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. How, how can I complain? Yeah. You know, yeah. You know. yeah. And the thing is, man, I mean, it, it shows the evidence of God, though, because surviving the things you survived, me, Louis, um, others that we spoke to today, um, the that's the evidence of God I'm being still, able to say like, yo, the fact that we still here, that we're able to have these conversations, this dialogue, this thing didn't paralyze us. It didn't cripple us. Mm-hmm. We're not in a house where we're not wanting to talk or answer the phone and just avoiding society. Mm-hmm. But we still being utilized by God and still giving God glory. Like, I'm listen, definitely. that's. That in itself is the power of God. Yeah. Because that's nothing we can take credit for. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Nothing we can take credit for. That's right. You know what I mean? So, like, mm-hmm. again, man, that's why everything that you said is just is powerful, man. And yeah. I just hope and I pray that, like, the audience and those who will listen, those who will watch, realize that regardless of what trials you're facing, you know, that you still can get up that's and right. still be used yeah. by God and see God's yeah, ultimate definitely. purpose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because a trial-free life, mm-hmm. you know, you'll be sitting here just navigating and, you know, going from one thing to another, still never realizing what's the ultimate purpose in life. Yeah. Everything yeah. else gets old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of the things that I'm doing now, like being a health ambassador. Yeah, and like, show, about that. Yeah, I nice. travel all over the country, you know, spreading awareness and telling my story. Mm-hmm. A lot of times I'll be on a the panel, there'll be like three or four doctors and me. <laughs> Like, you know, it was, you got a doctorate, you, you know, but no, I, no, actually you got a doctor. You got a doctorate in life experience. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I never, yeah. ever thought I would be doing these things, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, we took lemons and turned them into lemonade. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. And now, now we got an entire orchard um, and we're franchising and we're enterprising. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. And so, as far as, you know, uh, like, I know it's a lot of violence and negativity, gun violence and all the stuff going on in the city. So. With my Foundation Freedom Thinkers Academy, mm-hmm. we started some workforce development programs. So mm-hmm. we got phlebotomy, medical billing and coding. We got audio visual engineering. Oh, dope. We probably graduated like at least 10 cohorts of students so far. Wow. So, wow. Our, uh, la- we have a phlebotomy course going on right now with uh, my partnership with the Community Education Building in Wilmington. 
We have an audio visual engineering uh, program going on right now through my partnership with OIC in <laughs> Philadelphia. Okay. And our last um, cohort of, of of phlebotomy students, it was 13 women, and when they graduated, they all had jobs. Mm-hmm. Before they graduated. Mm-hmm. That's, what's, that's what's up, man. That's, that's, what's up. that's my, my way of trying to, you know, give back to the community. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of these young folks is doing these things because they don't have any opportunities. Yeah, we thought so. Yeah. We provide them with this opportunity. You know, they take this course, they get the certification, and we assist them in getting jobs in their area. That's, that's what's, what's up, man. How's, how does, uh, let me ask you something, though. How, how was your interactions with a lot of young rappers, younger artists? You know what I mean? Like, how do you uh, break down that dichotomy of your experiences in life, seeing it from a bigger picture? also understanding the rap game, mm-hmm. um, to even understanding the climate. A lot of the stuff that you talked about, man, mm-hmm. demons, and a lot of things that's being perpetuated through the music. Mm-hmm. Like, what do that look like for you or some of the youngins mm-hmm. when, when you get a chance to rap to some of the young rappers? This is how we having a conversation right now. You know, I just keep it a bean with them. Okay. You know, uh, some people choose to grasp it. As you know, some people ain't trying to hear it. You know, so, yeah. you know, I just do my job and, you know, just... Point Tell them the truth from my point of, spe- point of perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Okay, so. Look, but like a lot of my students, like they be open, like, you know, and they really be, you know, interested. So, yeah, it's good. Not. That was awesome. There, there, there are people in life that you meet for a reason. They may stay a season and the impression that they give you lasts a lifetime. Mm-hmm. And you are one of those people that really, who's like, whose life um, and whose just spirit will stay with me um, for a lifetime. Thank you. And I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, it's a, it's a privilege to know you. It's a privilege to. Same here, bro. Yeah. This has been great vibes since, you know, since yeah. day one, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's a privilege to be connected with you. I'm Lewis L. Reed. I hate the, I hate the end of this conversation. For sure. Yeah. For I'm sure. Lewis L. Reed. We probably need a part two because yeah, I yeah. we ain't even really cracked it. You know what I mean, yet, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we ain't cracked it. We, <laughs> I'm, I'm with it. I'm for it, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, free free got me over here talking about the faith, man. I mean, it's so important. So like, yeah, for sure. you know, whatever we could do, man. My man Imam Kaiser, he just became appointed uh, the head of Islamic affairs mm-hmm. um, over here in Philly with the mayor's office. So yeah, good good brother. Yeah, shout out to Sherelle so. Parker. Yeah, me and her got a little cool relationship going on too. Yeah, I performed at our inauguration, and you know, I saw uh trying to develop some things with my Freedom Thinkers Academy. Yeah, so, man. So listen, man, like how whatever we could do to really lead our city back towards the proper trajectory that faith is mm-hmm. supposed to have. Because a lot of these brothers, man, they, they professing to be Christian, Muslim, yeah. something. Mm-hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, whatever ways, man, we can go ahead and build to gather our brothers, have those conversations, talk to them as men. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and let it be known, man, that this life is short and you got to be accountable for your actions one way or another. Sure. And it's time that we really fear God and move how we supposed to move. So no, it's definitely, yeah, man. So like, let's really do what we got to do to turn that up as well. And I'm able to be a resource and help in whatever I can, man, with freedom thinkers and anything else, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah. yeah. You heard it here first. It's about to happen. It's going to go down freeway. I appreciate you anytime, bro. Pastor Carl. Appreciate you, my Likewise, brother. brother. Another episode of Illmatic Surviving Beats Overcoming Breaks. You know what it is. How? Surviving Diddy, which I was just saying. <laughs> Until next time, like, subscribe, share. Illmatic Podcast. Overcoming Beats Surviving Breaks. See you next time.